Hi everyone, so this is the introduction to drama and uh, pre-reading video for Raisin in the Sun. So this semester for uh, drama, we're going to be reading the play uh, A Raisin in the Sun. Some of you may have already read it, um, but uh, um, we'll be using that as our uh, example of drama. So uh, drama, we've, we've done poetry before, which were the shorter pieces. Um, they didn't have a plot. There wasn't a story necessarily involved with those. Um, uh, we did that. Uh, we looked at fiction, uh, which are stories, right? That is, there is a, uh, you know, a beginning, middle, and an end to the story that kind of moves along like that. Um, and then we're going to do uh, drama, which also is a story, but it's a little bit different because drama is meant to be seen. Fiction, you're supposed to read it on the page, right? Uh, or on a screen, you would say. Um, so those stories that you read, How to Date a Brown Girl, The Only Traffic Signal on the Reservation, The Lesson, that's how those things were meant to be experienced. Everything you need to know is there on the page because those authors expected that you would pick up a book or, as again, like I said, we read it on a screen, but some same uh, basic concept, um, and read those words and you would know everything you need to know. We're looking at drama. Drama is a little bit different because drama is meant to be performed. You are not meant to read drama. Um, for historical kinds of reasons, when we do literature, we use, um, uh, we think about drama as being one of the uh, uh, genres that we're, we discuss, and that's one of the requirements of this course, is that we talk about poetry and drama. Um, and so we think about it as literature that we read, but it's really meant to be performed. Um, and so reading drama on some level is kind of like reading television or movie scripts, right? Whatever TV show you might like, um, whatever movie you might like. Imagine if you didn't go see it, but you just read the script. Well, you could get an understanding of what generally was going on, but a lot of stuff would be missing. Um, you wouldn't be able to see who is actually playing the characters, right? You might imagine who those people are, but if you've just, if you've never seen the movie before uh, and you're just reading it, you don't know what those characters are supposed to look like, right? Um, you don't know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, you don't know uh, what kind of clothes they wear, right? You don't understand that. Uh, you don't understand the tone of their voice. Um, there's all kinds of things that you don't really understand. You can't see just from the page. What's going on in the background? What does the set look like? What kind of rooms are they in? If they're outside, what does it look like? What is it? If they're outside, is the sun shining? Um, uh, is the sun shining or is it uh, raining? Um, uh, if they're inside, what kind of furniture do they potentially have, right? There's all kinds of things like that. Uh, when people are going to be speaking, how is it they're moving, right? So I can do things like use hand gestures here. What kind of hand gestures might they be using and uh, how does that uh, affect things? How do they interact with each other? Do they look at each other? Uh, do they look away from each other? There's all that information that you can't necessarily see on the page. So what I, what, how I want us to think about what we're doing here for the um, uh, for looking at this play. Uh, one of the reasons why I save it for the end is because I think it's the most difficult because it does require you to use your imagination. It does require you to begin to think about uh, what these words on the page actually mean, what they would look like if we were actually to see them, and realize that if somebody is going to put on the play, and that's a job, those are jobs that people have, right? People uh, put on the play, they they direct the play, they're actors in the play. Some of you may uh, be involved in the, uh, the theater at QCC. If you put on a play, we have to make decisions about that, right? We have to decide which uh, actors do we want to have play these particular parts? What costumes do we want them to have? How do we want them to deliver the lines, right? Some lines, do they yell this line or do they whisper this line, right? Uh, um, and that depends on what you think that the play is ultimately supposed to mean. So you have to, on some level, kind of imagine what's going on with this play when you read it, with this when you read the play. Um, and so that's, uh, again, a more difficult uh, uh, task because, as we said, with the, with the other uh, genres, with poetry and fiction, everything you needed was on the page. You didn't need to imagine that much because all you had to do is look here and they would tell you everything you needed to know. Whereas this, you have to kind of say, what do I want this person to say, right? Uh, uh, what, what do I imagine 
this um, uh, this set looking like? So all of those uh, things uh, potentially come to mind here. So keep that in mind as you're going to be reading this. So um, this uh, looks might look somewhat intimidating because it says it's 156 pages long, but there's not a lot of words per page, right? Uh, I, and I only want you to I want you to begin on page 24. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, but as it says, twenty-four, uh, page twenty-four just lists um, who was in the uh, uh, the original production of the play, right? So there's nothing in there. Uh, one thing you might want to notice here, if you're uh, if you're a fan of uh, Watchmen, um, Louis Gossett played George, um, and he plays the grandfather in Watchmen. If you if you've seen Watchmen. If you haven't seen Watchmen, watch it. It's good. Um, but that just gives you some uh, general stuff here about who directed it, that is, who kind of, you know, told the actors what to do and all that, who designed the lighting, right, which matters something in terms of you can see how lighting can affect the mood here. And that's something else you might have to imagine. Who designed the costumes? What kind of clothes are people wearing? And how does that tell us some, provide some extra information? Um, so that's just some background information here. This tells us um, uh, when the uh, 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 when the play is set on Chicago's South Side, sometime between World War II and the present, probably not this present, right? Not 2020. Uh, the present between World War II and about 1960 uh, is when we're looking at. So uh, 1945 to 1960. So basically, the the 50s pretty much is when this is supposed to take place. Uh, that becomes important because. Um, issues of uh, uh, racism are going to be prevalent uh, in this story. Um, we've, it takes place in three acts. Um, for the first section that I have you looking at, I want you to look at Act 1. <clears throat> um, and it's got uh, uh, plays are usually divided into acts, which are just big sections, almost like chapters, let's say. Um, and then we've got scenes, which are smaller sections. Um, and so uh, uh, we've got three acts. The, you're going to look at the, the first one uh, in one sitting and then acts two and three in another sitting. Um, and then, um, uh, again, the, we've got the specific scenes in here. Um, and then uh, when we get into act one, um, you can see that it mentions here, um, uh, but before we actually get to the actual play, it's kind of telling you what the place looks like. It says, uh, the younger living room would be a comfortable and well-ordered room if it were not for a number of indestructible contradictions to this state of being. Its furnishings are typical and undistinguished, and their primary feature now is that they have clearly had to accommodate the living of too many people for too many years and they are tired, right? So it's talking about the furniture is being tired, right? It's a metaphor, right? Because obviously it's personification because furniture can't be tired. Um, but it gives this sense about what this room is supposed to look like. You can see how that becomes potentially important um, if you're going to, you know, just for you to be thinking about the play, but also if you were to put, be putting the play on. You'd have to decide on what that furniture is going to look like. You would have to be able to make some decisions about uh, which pieces you want to put in there, how is it that you want to make that uh, that living room look because that sets a certain mood. Um, and so uh, uh, a lot of this be is background here just to give us a sense of how we're supposed to be thinking about the setting here um, and um, uh, to give on some level the directors the uh, some idea about what it is they're supposed to, to, supposed to be doing when they're going to be producing the play. Um, so um, uh, we've got all that that you're going to read. just gives you that uh, general background. Um, as it says in here, time sometime between World War II and the present, as we said, is 1945 to 1960 or so, Chicago's South Side. Um, and this tells you what's going on as we begin at rise, at the rise of the curtain at the beginning of the play. It is mo uh, morning dark in the living room. Travis is asleep in a makedown bed at the center. An alarm clock, sound, sound, clock sounds from within the bedroom at right, and presently Ruth enters from that room and closes the door behind her. Uh, and so it's telling what's going on, who this, this are. Travis is her son. Ruth is the mother. Um, and they're waking up in the morning and going about their day. Um, and then what we get in a play is we have uh, this first part is kind of this description. We would not, if you went to see the play, you wouldn't hear that description. Nobody would be telling you that. Um, but um, instead, the play would begin with, you know, Bruce would be moving around, and then Ruth, first lines you would hear, she would say, come on now, boy, it's 7.30. Um, these things in the uh, parentheses are just 
uh, kind of directions telling us what uh, the characters are doing at that time. So her son sits up at last in a stupor of sleepiness. Uh, I say, hurry up, Travis. You aren't the only person in the world who got to use the bathroom, right? Um, and uh, so, and then some more stage direction there. Um, and so um, what we're going to have is each character simply talking um, and, uh, and engaging with each other. And that's where the how the story is going to unfold. Um, and so again, since you're only getting what people are saying, uh, and usually not too much getting a sense, you're getting a little bit of stage direction here, but not the same kind of stage direction you might get in the kind of uh, explanation you might get in a story where we explain exactly what somebody's voice is like, we explain exactly what the uh, um, what the atmosphere is, what the setting is, you know, what's going on with the weather, or anything like that. Um, and we don't get all of those kinds of uh, descriptions. Basically, the play is just going to be people talking to each other. Uh, and we want to think about how that um, uh, um, uh, uh, how that dialogue begins to advance uh, what we have going on in the story. So for this first section, again, I want you to read uh, through Act One, um, and uh, you'll get to seven or so. Again, these uh, there's not very many words per page here, so it seems like it's long, um, but if actually uh, not so long. So page through page seventy seven. Um, through Act 1 uh, for the first section, and then you'll respond to uh, the topics that I gave you. So uh, that's a general discussion for that. Go ahead and begin that, and, uh, and then uh, make another video for talking about Acts 2 and 3.